Top of the morning, everybody. I think we're going with top of the morning Oi. for now. <laughs> but just maybe we'll mix up the accents each British week. British week. Good <laughs> Top day. of the morning. Yeah. Top that's of a, the morning. That's offensive to a large portion of our audience. <laughs> like Krupa. <laughs> that's how he talks, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Welcome to Podcast Unlocked, episode 195 of the world's number one Xbox podcast for May 13th, 2015. You guys, you guys understand what that means? May 13th, 2015? This whole week. No. Palindrome oh. week! Oh. 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 This has been the best week ever. Have you guys <laughs> done anything to celebrate palindromes? No. I've only had uh, a... I drove a race car. I talked to my mom. <laughs> I... Wait, wait. Did you really drive a race car? It's a palindrome. <laughs> I, 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 get I, it, ate a <laughs> I ate a taco cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Marty gets it. Yeah. I, went to, uh, I go to bed each night, and then I wake up in the morning... What? It's a, re- it's, a, a, it's a really long it's palindrome. It's an IRL palindrome. Is it really? It's an IRL no. palindrome. No. This could go on all day. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a palindrome either. No. But yeah, every day this week, it's a palindrome. Yeah. Just and then five, there was one, a day like this. Five, five, yeah. one, four, one, five. Five, one, five, one, five. I mean, so in theory, it was one of these last year in April as well. And there will be another one next year. In June. Yeah. E3 is going to be palindrome week next when, year. When will it end? Uh, next week. <laughs> when will the sweet, sweet misery? <laughs> so uh, some fun announcements to make up front. Number one, join us on Friday, still a palindrome, May 15th, 12 noon Pacific. Oh, yeah. Google whatever your time zone is for that. I'm not going to do the math for you. That is uh, – Harmonics will be here, and we'll have the world gameplay debut live stream of Rock Band 4. Stoked for that, We're going to bang some drums. You're gonna hear some probably some bad karaoke. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really bad. Do we know what? Do we know any of the songs? Good we are time. going to reveal the first five nice. songs okay. of the game. Oh, awesome. that's awesome! If you want to know them before the live stream, you might want to stop by. There'll be a story on IGN in the morning. Scoops. Boom, and then Hot original news. We will play those on uh, on the live stream at noon. So, uh, do you I know hope... what they are yet? I do. Oh man, can you share that doc with me? I haven't seen. I this 100% yet. can Woo! share that with you later. It is yeah. five Vivaldi songs. Perfect. It is just the Charlie Brown <laughs> Christmas music. <laughs> Rock band uh, harmonics really caters to their fans. It's five Muse songs. <laughs> that's, that's all. That's all. That's all uh. it is. Uh, so yeah, really super stoked about that. Reminder: you can watch that not only on IGN or your phone or whatever, but uh, the PS4 or Xbox One app because mm-hmm. that live streams yep. now. So. Uh, that's probably the most fun way to kick back and enjoy us flailing wildly True. on yep. musical uh, toys. I'm really curious to see how this is actually shot. This Me too. <laughs> Good luck, video producers. Because <laughs> we're going to need direct feed. We're going to need some some people being asked. Two, two camera Ten shoot. Two camera shoot. Wide shot. No, two camera shoot. Wide shot. One Fincher. Roman cam. David Fincher is going to be here mm-hmm. directing the whole thing. Yep. It's not that bad. Uh, also, if you miss it live, you can just watch the VOD on iTunes. We're going to. That's video on demand for the... Yeah, that means there's a lot of acronyms coming up. There's a lot of acronyms coming up that I don't necessarily agree with. (laughs) Anyway. I'm just throwing that out here. uh, Rock Band 4, revealing it live for the first time. It is Friday at noon, so please Mm -hmm. join us for that. And of course, finally... Mark your calendars, Marty. Yeah, we did it. Many a painful meeting. We did it. And we're not, we're not done yet. <laughs> Some details are still yet to be worked out, but we can safely say mm-hmm. save the date Saturday, June 27th. Yep. Somewhere in San Francisco. We actually know where. We just can't say yet because it's not all yeah. signed. We, don't have done. We, we haven't crossed the I's and dotted the T's. Podcast Unlocked, episode 200. Along with, we're, we will be the, the opening band for, yeah. sticking with the music theme, for Podcast Beyond, episode 400. Yeah. Both double those, feature! This is going to be a double, a creature now, feature. A lot of people seem confused. It will not be an eight-person super show. No. Despite the fact that Finnegan says that literally every time. <laughs> yeah. Every time Finnegan's like, eight-person podcast. It's like, nope. No, that's, that would be the worst show yeah. you could possibly we're imagine. We're actually going to do them simultaneously. Uh, Marty, it's going to be like dueling banjos. Yeah, Marty's in the near, middle near, having near, conversations near, 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 near. both sides at the same time. Just drinking very sad. <laughs> But yeah, so we'll uh, we'll get started at a you know reasonable time. That is, we're still n- nailing it down exactly. But we'll uh, we'll get everybody in. We'll hang out. We'll relax, and then we will do a nice long fun episode 
of Podcast Unlocked, mm-hmm. which even if it isn't actually episode 200, I will make it episode 200 by simply... Yeah. The same thing with Beyond. It's not going to be actually by, 400. You'll just whatever. record 37 episodes. It's close enough. No, they're both yeah. going to be close enough within like two or three. So oh, okay. as long as nothing changes, again, we're going to... We would hit it. We would hit 200 the week before. So I'll just skip it and go... We'll go 199 to 201 and then just come love back it. to 200. Love it. <laughs> love it. Because, again, I have that power. Do we yep. know... I mean, we can't talk about the venue yet, but is it going to be 18 plus or 21 plus or anything? All ages. All ages. All ages. All ages awesome. And uh, yeah, we'll... BYOB. We'll have, We'll have to, <laughs> can I? No, Flask. Just yeah. Flask. Um, yeah, it should be it should be super cool. We're gonna have uh, yeah, we, we're already planning some cool things for both shows. Uh, special things. We are. Yeah. Ish. I don't <laughs> know. We talk, we've I talked know about any something. Of these are. Oh, no, I, we should probably actually have a meeting then. Yeah. <laughs> I actually. Have I would f- like to know what's going on. We have some on. ideas. I have okay, a phone cool. call to make about that too. Yeah. But we'll we'll see if we can we can figure out um, some fun stuff. Yeah, and it's going. We're gonna be uh, filming it as well. It's not gonna be live streamed, but uh, it'll be up on the site. Yeah. So if you can't make it to San Francisco, uh, you'll be able to enjoy it uh, alongside us shortly. Yeah. After. There'll was, be a vod. I actually. There'll be a vod. <laughs> <laughs> My man. Yeah. it will be probably the next day. You'll be able to catch the video and audio is when when it'll all get. Maybe someone has to work on Sunday. Suck it, video. <laughs> what do you mean? I, I'd have to work too by to publish the audio show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the same boat. Anyway, yeah, th- thrilled to finally announce that. Mm-hmm. It'll be a fun time. It'll just be good to get together with. Uh, I hope you can make it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I know we were originally talking about trying to do it in L.A. and hopefully nobody, everyone heeded my warning and didn't actually book travel to L.A. Mm-hmm. But yeah, San Francisco, Saturday, June 27th. Yeah. And trust us, we would have liked to time. announce this earlier, but uh, it was very complicated. A lot of moving parts. We know yeah. the earlier the better with with taking time off work and and train tickets because that's how people get places. Uh, it should be fun though. I'm really excited. Likewise, Mitchell be there. I hope he's invited. Yay! <laughs> people care about me. Destin, you're invited too. Yay! Even, even though you barely show go. up to this podcast, Ooh. I missed like two episodes. <laughs> I got a raid. I have to do, guys. I can't make it. Chrono was a lot of good. Like, I'm in the middle of a strike. Like every episode, they're like, Destin, you have to record this live stream and do 90 clips. <laughs> I was like, all right, sorry, Ryan. <laughs> Uh, it's fine. Other, it, let, it let me catch up in trivia. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we got ourselves. I heard. A, we got ourselves a ball game here. Yes, cheaters. Speaking of which, I'll do some research early on. Oh, you're gonna prep ahead. Oh, of I don't know the answer, out. boys. Anyway. Anyway, uh, big big news this week. It's not out till next week, but our Witcher three review went up. I want to tip my hat right now, even though he's not here in the room, to Vince Ingenito, our reviewer, who apparently hates himself. Yep. Because he's put 120 plus hours into The Witcher 3 in one week yep. in order to get that review done. That's I didn't see insane. him the whole time. Like he, he, just he didn't wasn't come here. In. He just went home and yeah, played he, the game. He also like he just came in to like record his VO, and like it was the first time I ever said this to a human. And I was just like, "You look awful. <laughs> <laughs> like, you look terrible." Like he just looked like a, like a husk of a man. He's like, "Yeah, I don't feel great." Uh, that's <laughs> if oh, that's man. a seven day week. That's seventeen hours a day. Wow. Oh, my yeah. God. I mean, that dwarfs because I I was pretty proud years ago when I was uh, in my younger days, single days, nothing tying me down. Mm-hmm. I was really excited. I actually went out to Bethesda in Maryland to review Fallout. Oblivion, oh, man. Elder Scrolls for Oblivion, which I was thrilled to do, even though I knew it was going to be a haul because uh, it was four days, and I ended up putting 44 hours into the game. Oh, God. Which was, of course, and then I went home and later, which was enough to do the review, but then after the game came out and I was playing on my own time, I put 175 hours into wow. Oblivion. But even 44 hours over four, it was 11 hour days, but Vince just made me look like, you know, like a chump, <laughs> like a loser. Seriously, we've had two. That and then uh, Brandon Terrell's uh, Bloodborne review oh my God, of, that of like burning through that game in like five or six days. <laughs> just like, I'm, too, I'm getting too old for this. I, I beat Journey in one sitting. <laughs> <laughs> Solid 90 minutes. <laughs> yeah, it took me a few nights. <laughs> oh my goodness, but. Yeah, yep. Witcher 3, and the point being, Vince gave it a hell of a score. Yeah. and It's the highest score he's ever given. That's what he's ever given. Yep. He hasn't worked yeah. here very long. Yeah. No, I mean, <laughs> in his career. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yep. Yeah. It's a good, uh, seems like a very good video game. What's the highest score each of you got? Well, you, Destin, you are a video extraordinaire. You're not, but well, you've done I, reviews yeah, I've in done the past, reviews. right? So what's the highest um, score each of you have ever given? Destin. Yeah, I think I gave, well... The, when the old website I used to work at, we didn't have, really have a scale, mm-hmm. but I gave something. Uncharted Two is the game I would have given a ten. So but Uncharted Two, I guess I gave it a buy it, <laughs> an emphatic buy it. Yeah, just have like it, love it, gotta have it. Marty, yeah, uh, I gave 
gone home a nine point five. On what scale? On how many uh, point scale? IGN nine point five. Uh, the the but with the twenty point scale from a few years oh, no, ago. No no or no, no, no. The, it was it's a hundred the hundred point scale. Yeah okay. And then I think I gave the uh, Shadow of the Colossus in the Eco Collection at one up an A plus, which is was our highest. Yeah thing. yeah. Is, would that have been a ten? Yeah. No, I mean that. It's that t- it's it's equal. yeah. Ish. Like, yeah. Well, no, I mean, like, in, in his head, though, what would it be? On an IGN scale now, would it be a 10? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. I'd, yeah. I'd make the argument for it. I adore both those games. Me too. Yeah. Yep. Mitch? Uh, I gave Flower on PS4 a 9.5 because Dan wouldn't let me give it a 10. <laughs> uh, was that 20 uh, point scale or 100 point that scale? That was 100. 100 point scale. Yeah, I just, I have, I still struggle with the 100 point scale. I don't really know, like, the whatever. Uh, <laughs> I think maybe I, th- I gave a Far Cry game. Like, maybe Far Cry 3, I think I gave a 9.5. Maybe. Might have been just a 9. Yeah. Um, but I gave Battlefield Bad Company 2 a 5 out of 5 at Game Pro. Nice. Oh, yeah. Uh, I OXM w- was on a 20-point scale for a while, so I gave a 10 or 2 that way. I think uh, Cl- Black Ops, or Modern Warfare 1 mm-hmm. and, Black and Black Ops, Ops. 1. But on the 100-point scale, either at OXM, which it had for many years, or at IGN, uh, probably would, would have to be the 9.9 that I Halo gave 4? to Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. Oh, back oh on yeah. the original Xbox. I gave Halo 4 a 9.8. Oh, gotcha. Which I stand by. Yeah. But uh, yeah, 9. Po- I actually, I tried to give Chaos Theory a 10 out of 10 mm-hmm. on the 100 point scale. Well, Iron Fist and Reigns. Was, <laughs> wasn't happening. No, it was, that was Rob Smith. <laughs> oh, that was Rob yeah. Smith. I was shot down, but I still to this day feel like that game is absolutely a 9.9. Mm-hmm. It was such an amazing game uh in three three amazing games Holds technically up. do you think we'll see a 10 this year Ooh. on our on the IGN on 100 IGN. point scale IGN, we'll wow hmm. well Let's see. I, I, you've I, got Batman, 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 Batman Metal Gear Bat- oh, Metal Metal Gear. Call of Duty uh yeah. Halo 5 Halo 5 Tomb Raider oh, Halo 5 in theory these are all in theory yeah, yeah. right Star yeah. Fox Star Fox Star Box well, Mirror's Edge can't get a 10 because it's not coming out this year. <laughs> I can't get a 10 yeah. this year. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, That's it's tough possible. Question. I'll just go to CMS and give someone a 10 right now. Next game I review. Not a hero. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Easy. <laughs> Done. Uh, also, with this in mind. Cuphead. Cuphead. Ooh. Inside. Ooh. Not this year. No way. We'll see. All right. Inside, maybe. Uh, with all this in mind, do you guys have... It, it occurred to me, last year, Marty and I had this conversation. By the end of the year, I didn't really have a game of the year. Nothing stood out. It's like, oh, man. like I, the, Yeah, I Do you guys have a game of the year this year yet? No. Last year I had uh, my contender up until my my game of the year was uh, South Park, The Stick of Truth. Yep. I reviewed it in oh, March, yeah. mm-hmm. and it held that personal title inside my brain until I played Sunset Overdrive yep. at, towards the end of the year. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So I, far, I have not played anything that I would call a game of the year. I think Witcher is going to be a contender for I me. Mean, I haven't played oh, yeah. Witcher yet. Yeah. 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 It's really good. Yeah, uh, Bloodborne for me is the one that stands mm. out. So oh far. yeah, God, I keep yeah. forgetting that and Ori. game came out. I'm, I'm slow. I'm Ori, not, I haven't yeah. finished Ori, but man, that game is awesome. Ori's great. definitely the best game, game I've played this mean. year. <laughs> that game <laughs> gets mean. Yep. Well, it, but there, there's sort of two. Yeah, most it's there's two. There are two areas that are just escaping the just, the tree. Well, just whatever. take, just punch your nuts against <sighs> I, a brick I did that wall. In my first try. Really it felt like a god. Yeah. <laughs> that was a, oh god, what an amazing scene. Yeah. There's also a lava escape at one point. Yes. It's it's uh, more horizontal. Oh, but, okay. But it's. Ugh. I'm currently <laughs> stuck in Ori. I don't know. How, how you gotta get out that power through, man. I'm gonna finish that game. You gotta do it. That'll be probably the first game I finish this year. I don't know. Congratulations! You didn't finish Dota. <laughs> still trying. You can't trade in your copy. Nope. 1,300 hours later, still God. getting there. God. On that note, you're gonna die alone. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Stoked to check out Witcher 3 next week. Uh, the other thing, that the po- story that popped up with this, it uh, the Xbox One version of Witcher 3 apparently will dynamically shift from 900p to 1080p whenever it can. It when like? it needs to? When it can. Oh. I, Why? I, you know, I hate to even dredge this up because I feel like the how many Ps does it have conversation finally seemed to really mostly we go away. Put that out the pasture. Uh, but I would, I mean, 1080p is nice, but I would rather have 900p with a better frame rate Yeah. if I were given the option. Agreed. I mean, if it's 720p versus 1080p, that's a bit of a different story. But man, 
I don't, I, I don't, Did, wanna, I don't wanna talk about this. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't wanna talk about this yeah. because then you it goes- You start talking about yeah. peas, I got an important text message. Yeah. And I was like, I'm gonna just take this. Right. Oh, hey, look at my phone. <laughs> we'll move on. We'll come back and talk about things people really care about. All right. Right, right after this. I like 1080i better. <laughs> Welcome back. News unlock time. Video games. Yeah. Let's have some new ones. Yeah. Like the Assassin's Creed Syndicate. No colon. We got to get into this. No, no one be writing this game name with a colon in it. I out, of, I out of context. A lot of people have been writing it with a colon. Ubisoft gave up on colons a long time ago. Yeah. And that sounds gross. That sounds this very This is an gross. interesting conversation. <laughs> yeah, too much poutine. So uh. Uh, how do we feel about it, Marty? You were sort of there for their re yeah. little reveal mm -hmm. mini live stream thing. It, as you put it to me, it seems like Gangs of New York, but in London. Yeah, which sounds uh, super cool. Sounds like something I want. Uh, that whole 30-minute package they put together I thought was really smart. They sort of head-on, humbly addressed a lot of the issues with Unity that people had, saying, like, we... You know, we wanted this to be the best game possible, and we understand. You know, things went things went wrong. They showed clips of you know negative comments in yeah. reviews. They had, they they showed like a part of my review where I was criticizing the game. They showed the the face melting off thing, yeah. and they were sort of just very honest about that and being like, we don't want this to happen again, and yeah. sort of telling the story of this game's uh, development and then showing the game. The the game first off, it seems like it has a almost like a more a lighter tone like black flag like it's hmm. it's very much about like gang warfare but the sh even scene, though it's set in like a dark like, gringy like, <laughs> in like yeah Victorian Dickensian London, London. Yeah. Uh, I mean not like the golden age of piracy was a was like holler yeah. hoot and good time but just like the scenes they showed like the dialogue the banter was very much like you know it was it was comical in a dark way as opposed to Unity which was very yeah. serious. Yeah, and so. I think that comes down to the, the protagonist, Jacob Fry. Mm -hmm. uh, he, I mean, so there are two protagonists, Jacob and Evie Fry. And Jacob is the more like headstrong, brash guy. They've explained him as like a, basically a brute who just gets in, he likes to fight. Yeah. So I think that his characteristics kind of reflect that. He's mm -hmm. like ready to have a good time. He loves what he does. He seems like a Guy Ritchie character almost. Yeah, yeah. a little bit. Whereas Evie is a lot more grounded and quiet and just like kind of the Quiet leader behind him, like yeah. this is what we need to do. This is how we're yeah. going to do it. Jacob, calling Jacob shots. seems like Ezio, whereas Evie seems like Altair almost. Yeah, um, I think is... one of the big improvements is going to be the scorpion spear, just for trans traversal. <laughs> Whatever the scorpion spear. What, that's Get what I'm calling it. it. Yeah. That's what I'm calling it. I mean, the, it. they talk about this is the yeah. fastest Assassin's Creed, and yeah. in a lot of ways, it looks a lot like just a regular Assassin's Creed, and yeah. then they're like really slow fist fights. Yeah, but then. They eliminate climbing by just having a grappling hook. You mean and yeah, that looks Batman's great. grappling hook? <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is totally yep. fine. I'm yeah. like, God, Arkham does so That's many good things. That's Tenchu's grappling mm -hmm. hook, actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, looks really cool. Uh, obviously, London looked great. Uh, the, there's vehicles. I mean, this Grand is the Theft first Horse Care, Horse Drawn Carriage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's trains. Uh, very much. Uh, this is the furthest in the series, the timeline, the main yeah. series has ever gone. And you see, it seems like they're pulling some things from Watch Dogs with trains and with, with vehicles. Uh, no multiplayer. Focusing wow, that's purely, that's purely interesting. on single player. This is just new gen and mm -hmm. PC. Uh, so there's Ubisoft has said they're not doing uh, 360 yeah. and PS3 games anymore. So except for they, Just Dance, except for Just Dance, they showed the environmental takedowns. They're like, this is the first time we've done it, but that was in Assassin's Creed One. You could grab people and throw them into things, and it would kill them. Yeah, like instantly. Oh, yeah. yeah, you know, I remember that. Yeah, I yeah. So I was kind of surprised. They're like, this is the first time we're doing it. It's like since no, 2007. Been, been, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> since 2007. Yeah. Uh, Looks cool though. I think this was a good. This was a good reveal. Uh, it was one of those things where I saw the game, I saw the demo, I saw the trailer, and I'm like, all right, I want to play this now, and I want to see more. So that's I think Here, a mark of a good reveal. Here's my concerns. Like, I love the reveal for Assassin's Creed Three. Assassin's oh, yeah. Creed that Unity was... looked absolutely phenomenal. Assassin's Creed Syndicate looks great. Am I gonna play it and be disappointed for the right. third time? Yeah. You know? I mean, yeah. but so the whole thing was. I don't know. The series has been, you know, it's been peaks and valleys. It's been, yeah. yeah. AC sure. one was a disappointment. Uh, AC two was incredible. Mm -hmm. You know, people have mixed feelings. Uh, I think everyone loves Brotherhood. Brotherhood and a lot like of people don't like wave. Revelations. Yeah, I actually yeah. like yeah. Revelations. So so. Not. Brotherhood's phenomenal. Yeah, three was a disappointment. Four was incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, Unity, I thought was a valiant effort, but ultimately not the game we wanted. Um, I was still on wikis for three, so I had to hundred percent sync everything, and I think I just got burned so bad on that one. It's just like I can't even. Yeah. bring myself to start a new new yeah. game in that series. Totally. Um, I'll give this one a chance. Yeah, I'll play for like yeah. an hour or two, and if it can hook me, then I'll play through the whole thing. But yeah. yeah. Uh, hook you. Uh, uh, get, it. Uh, get over uh, here and play the rest of the game. <laughs> I have a weird thing with Assassin's Creed where uh, I just every year I get excited about it, and then every year I end up not really playing much of it. Same mm -hmm. with me. It's not a tough time. And it's I, yeah. I can't even – it's not even – 
it's not that the games are bad. It's just this odd, I don't know if it's a fatigue thing with the brand. It's the same thing where I just am very not excited about playing Call of Duties every year anymore. Yeah. I very much enjoyed the campaign of Advanced Warfare last mm-hmm. year, which was the first time I enjoyed a Call of Duty campaign in a few years. But yeah, I just I even though I I love I appreciate that they're all they've been all different ever since they let go of the Ezio trilogy yeah. and just got out of Rome. Every single one has been different, and I really appreciate that. But for some reason, I just they're having trouble uh, hooking me, and we I'm just, not sure why. Stop. I think I was so <laughs> soured on three that it still yeah. affects me. Like I I wasn't super into the first game. Two caught fire for me in a yes. big way. I played that game for like 50 hours. I played through Brotherhood twice and got 100% on my second playthrough. Two in Brotherhood. Loved Revelations despite its very obvious flaws. Uh, and was super excited for 3 because it looked incredible. But I hated so much about Assassin's Creed 3 yeah. that even though Black Flag was a way better game, I just didn't care. And when Unity came around, it looked amazing, but I just I could not muster any interest mm-hmm. to, to I, actually play it even though i know right. that mm-hmm. like i'm sure it's a good game in many ways and i'm sure that syndicate will be but my interest in like just going through the effort to pick up a controller and start is minimal mm-hmm. even though i, I might yeah. enjoy it I'm i got to a book. third chest that is like log off and log into your web browser uh, to open this chest and i'm like you've like on immerse me from your world again yeah i don't want to spend any more time here this is going to keep happening i'm out yeah. please insert 50 you play credits to yeah continue. exactly it was yeah. terrible i'm interested to see what they do with the modern element like the current day stuff because mm-hmm. fours was so good i don't know what did five have it or oh, unity, unity no unity had the the, the time travel <laughs> right. sounds, like sounds like a cat fell <laughs> off a it roof it sounds outside. like the building crumbled yeah. outside uh yeah I'd, I'd be interested to see how they handle that this time especially yeah, totally. since you're playing as twins mm-hmm I want to give this a chance. I'm just scared too. Don't be scared. I mean, I like <laughs> that it's is yeah. <laughs> love that it's uh, new gen only. Even though technically Unity was too. Yeah, totally. Um, but and new development team here. That's the other yeah, thing Quebec. that nobody's talking about. Quebec. Quebec. Quebec so City. some you know fresh ideas yeah. bring, being brought to the table. Yeah. So uh, we shall see what October 23rd. October 23rd. That is right before Halo Five. Yeah, we're slowly filling in our uh, fall lineup. The flags are being planted in the ground yeah. on each, this is on my each week. day. This is my yeah, week. Like, top comment was pre-alpha footage. I don't believe you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It looks really good to be pre-alpha. Like, well, if that's where they're at, what, a year? Vertical year Slice out? is still pre-alpha. Yeah. yeah. yeah the vertical Slice is a polished thing that mm-hmm. looks real. That's that's what's been getting so many games into trouble, is showing off these yep. crazy vertical slices. Wow, that, that game looks been... totally shippable. <laughs> yeah, but the rest of it is broken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Video games are really hard to make, people. <laughs> yep. We have seen, we get a little glimpse of it from from where we get to sit, yep. and it's... Sometimes they're it's, so hard, they get delayed. Yes. We did it, we did it. We did it. Mitch, 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 Mitch. So proud of you. Mitch, Mitch, Mitch. I, okay. Okay, Marty. <laughs> okay, Marty. The Division, as we said it would be, has been delayed to Q1 2016. Yeah, I think we I am call, shocked and amazed. Did we call this on the show or just in the office? I can never remember. It, but, because I 100% was expected this to happen i think i was telling you that it would come out this year like they can't possibly push it anymore and you're like no rainbow six is this year and it's an mmo goodbye well that's it's because uh destin you you can mm-hmm. attest here to the infrastructure wise the division appears to be very similar to destiny in the way it's built as sort mm-hmm. of a yeah. pseudo mmo but a persistent online that comparison's being thing. made quite often a lot of destiny players are really excited about the division and uh they worked on that since they worked on Destiny, like from Halo Reach on. Wow. Uh, you yeah. Know. So yeah. Three four year yeah. project. Massive's so, been doing mm-hmm. this since I think Assassin's Creed. Three. Like early concepts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, this is exciting because it means that in spring, because the Q1 of 2016 is uh, between January and March, so we definitely have a very early spring. MMO coming from UB, that's really exciting because I'm not super into Destiny, but man, am I going to play this. I am really excited about this game. I mean, if it's... They have claimed that it's more of a role-playing game. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Even though, obviously, it's real-time movement and shooting. Yeah. But if it's... Yeah, if it really focuses on role-playing elements... Building your character. And character elements and interpersonal relationships within the game uh, and small squads versus just shooty, shooty, bang, bang. Yeah. I'm... All like, over it would be so own? great if every time we logged on, it was just like, all right, here's our, like, it's the Unlocked crew, it's the four of us, like, we're mm-hmm. just going to go roll around New York tonight and try not to get killed. Yeah. 
My concern oh, with this is Destiny's exact problem is how focused will it be on having a narrative, you know, a story. Very good point. Yeah, and really that's point. difficult in these types of games. Sure. And I think yeah. that, like Destiny, this appears to be like the story is just there. Mm-hmm. You're in it. Like, oh, what happened is the story. Whereas what you're doing is you're an RPG man. Go shoot some guys to get some XPs. <laughs> yeah. RPG man. I don't mind digging for a story, like, no, but there has that. to be that path for the player to sure. explore and figure stuff out on. Yeah. So. Also, uh, this is a, a smart move anyway, I think, because even though Ubisoft has the marketing muscle, it's a lot. It's pretty rare for a new IP to come out and do well in the fall, in the in that fourth quarter holiday yeah. time. Mm-hmm. I mean, for every you know Dishonored, which did well enough to probably get a sequel. I mean, mm-hmm. we expect that to be announced at E3. I sure Jeez. as hell do. Uh, and Want for it. every, you know, of course, Gears of War was pushed with the first party massive marketing push. Uh, there are the Mirror's Edges and the Sunset Overdrives of the world that yeah. are great games that that are new IPs come out in the fourth quarter so and get killed. Yep, yep, yep. And again, I, I keep beating that drum, but this year, Dying Light came out in January, and it was a huge hit, and yeah. that's why, because that if that came out in October, it would have been buried. Yep. Um, yep. But Kinda man, like, man, oh man, there. spring looks busy. Yeah. <laughs> if this uh, Quantum Break, Uncharted. Uncharted, possibly Zelda. Possibly Ubisoft's other game they're announcing this fall. Yeah, that's right. Oh. <laughs> Which is also like apparently a Q1 2016 thing. Yeah. Don't worry, half those will get delayed. Yeah, yeah it's fine. <laughs> Including well, just, the division. <laughs> quite possibly, but for now, yeah, Q1 2016, January to mm. through March. That's the window mm. we have for this game. They just uh, need to aim down their sights and hit that perfect mark on the calendar. Boom! I love you, Destiny, so much. <laughs> I took uh, Marty's uh, lead there earlier. <laughs> It was a nice transition. I like that. I like how the, uh-huh. we do smooth transitions and then we, and just, then we just grind count. to yeah. a halt. Yeah. <laughs> we're just like pat, too busy like patting, us up, patting ourselves great. on the back. Yeah. Good the job, sir. Segue, and then we've lost all the momentum. <laughs> so this is a story I didn't actually know was a story. I yeah. Don't know, I, like, uh, I, I don't it's a non-story story. story. It, it came to light via an interview that there is no, there are no, there's no ADS, which the kids refer to. Don't for, like, don't no like ADS, this acronym. No ADS in what? We never told the listeners. In SWB? No. Star Wars Battlefront. Swibs. There's no ads in Swibs. Swibs. <laughs> so Star Wars Battlefront does not have aim down sights. Aim down sights. Which is interesting. Like, I don't know why that was a question in the interview, because the game doesn't have it. Like, they just they didn't show it with aim down sights. They never talked about it. The series has never had it. Well, but it. Y- you've seen it behind closed doors. Yeah. The public hasn't seen it yet. Sure. So, but the fact, I mean, it's a surprise because every AAA major first-person shooter has, has ADS now, including... Halo 5, the, the series that yep. previously never had ADS yep. and resisted it. So how do we feel about cuz uh, you know this ADS is like a weird Destiny you can speak to this because you're mm-hmm. such a you're so heavily involved in the Destiny community. And I mean ADS was a big deal when Destiny was going to have it because again Bungie with the Halo games had mm-hmm. never done ADS and, that. Uh, and I am personally I didn't care for it in Destiny within the context of Destiny cuz mm-hmm. I felt like I spent too, and I mean, this is how I generally feel with most ADS games. I spend too much time zooming down the barrel, and then the 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 video game motion blurs, and I'm just looking down this tube. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know. I, I like it. You like it? Yeah. You're I a mean, fan. I mean, later on, when you need to make precise hits on certain characters, it's very important. Right. So yeah, it's definitely needed in that world. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I I, I don't think aimed out sights is inherently good or bad. I think I it has a place in certain games and doesn't have a place in yep. other games. So I mean, if they're like, you know, this, I, I trust Dice making a shooter. Sure. Uh, so if the, they, Battlefield has had it though, right? Yep. So yeah. Dice is other games. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. The interesting thing for the, for me in, in, in Down Sights is I think that most games that don't have aim down sights do it in a way that I think makes narrative sense. In Left 4 Dead, why would you be aiming down the barrel of your gun when you just have zombies running at you? Right. You're gonna just shoot. In Star Wars, if you're a rebel or a stormtrooper, like you're just gonna start taking shots because there are waves of people coming at you. In Halo, you're a damn super soldier who doesn't need to aim down sights. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, technically you don't. It's all in the visor, man. <laughs> oh god. Uh, so the the one the one situation where I think it doesn't make any sense is Counter Strike. But at the same time, I think aim down sights would totally ruin Counter Strike. Like that game is a skill based shooter without right. aim down sights, and that's really interesting. Even mm-hmm. though you're like a special operative or whatever. 
so this makes sense to me. It's fine. Uh, the series has never had aim down sights. I mean, also, aim, would aim down sights be weird for a game that is first and third person? Yes. Yeah. Because you would just like what the camera like no, goes in true. a little closer yeah. to the third person. Yeah, it almost like Resident Evil or something. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But then at that point, like you actually see less if you're in third person. Yeah. Uncharted did aim down sights third person. Yeah, but I'm saying oh, that there. switches from first to third. Yeah, because aim That's down sights weird. in first person. Yeah. Is significantly more beneficial than aim down sights in third. Yeah. Well, and I th- but I think part of the story is that uh, it's it's surprising because I would say the majority of major first person shooters do have it. Yeah. I mean, whether it's in this post Call of Duty world. Yeah, post Call of Duty. I mean, even Rainbow Six or Halo or uh, you know pretty much anything you can name now is has ADS. So for this to not have it, bring back the skill shooting. Yeah, there you go. I'm all for it. Yeah, that's cool. It's it's just it's funny. It's always a pendulum, right? Because it's up until Call of Duty, nothing had ADS, and then er, that starts to become the trend. Everybody wants to jump on that Call of Duty train. Everything has ADS, Mm -hmm. and now maybe the pendulum starts to swing back a little bit. Like, oh well, maybe maybe some of these maybe we don't need to have that anymore. We can we can work around it. So uh, I I just I this is always a debate. I'll be curious. I know the that's what the comments are going to light up on on IGN is. People won't even have listened to the show. They'll just look at the headline, and they'll start arguing about aim yeah. down sights for good or bad. I, I think that's one of those things where there there's two camps. Yeah, and they'll just fight with each other until everybody dies. Oh no, <laughs> rip rip camps. <laughs> okay, speaking of death, ooh, video game called Bloodstained. Gross. What's that about? Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Awful name. Uh, very excited about this game though this is Koji uh, Igarashi's Kickstarter that was funded within hours uh, Igarashi is uh, the man who has sort of helmed all the great Castlevania games since Symphony of the Night so he's it's a nice of, resume well, and yeah. also a lot of the bad ones and a lot of bad ones but a lot of the, the great uh, GBA and, and DS ones uh, Aria of Sorrow Aria of Sorrow Circle of the Moon oh those, were those the GBA games yeah the GBA oh, and those the were so DS good Harmony of Dissonance um, <laughs> <laughs> thing of now no he made a few you know, good those all sound like Metallica song Adi- titles yeah, right. every yes. single one <laughs> yep. Cast me and Enter Sandman uh, <laughs> yeah and so this uh, game launched the Kickstarter it's very much it's in the same vein as uh Mighty Number no. Nine was to Mega Man. It's that same sort of thing. Like, hey, this is what I did. Famous and Japanese creator leaves company who owns major IP and makes brand makes new. That game. Makes the same yeah, thing so with a different name. It's very much like ukulele. Like uh, all these things. Uh, uh, it's going to be a big Metroidvania. Uh, got funded very quickly. Yeah, it was funded in the first day. They asked for five hundred thousand dollars in pledge. They are currently sitting at one million seven hundred eighty-eight thousand. Whoa! Yes. And they very much said like the funding was is not the entire game they, they wanted mm-hmm. to get this money to show venture Investors. capital that they already have locked down which that there's interest in this which is smart because i think and i think i'm even guilty of this this maybe this is just me but i feel like this is a general kind of game community perception that oh well you you know you got two million dollars in the kickstarter okay that should be it and then people get mad when they either need to you know like Take with more double or, fine yeah. needed yeah. to Needed to sell Act One mm-hmm. as a as a chunk to help fund the rest of it, or yeah. uh, you know bringing in. I mean, of course, Oculus Rift turned into a yeah. huge thing. Well, how dare they? How dare Facebook buy them for two billion dollars? We kickstarted that. We own that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like I think we all need to start taking Kickstarter a little more literally. Mm-hmm. Like it is a kickstart. It yeah. is. Yeah. It 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 will sh- it shows yeah. venture capitalists. Oh, there's interest in this. I totally want to invest in that and help make that happen as a fully yeah. feature thing because yeah wh- how much did you say Mitch two or what's it at one what is it 1.7 million dollars totally yeah. not enough money to make a, no, a major not. video no. game and even though it'll yeah. make you know it'll make another couple hundred grand by the time the Kickstarter yep closes uh I mean, yeah, we're still fun. in early days, too. Like, it peaked really high, and then at the end of the campaign, It'll have another a successful yeah. campaign will almost always peak again. Yeah. There's um, a sense of ownership and entitlement when somebody takes their money and gives it to a producer to, to make something, but you have to know you don't own that. It's a weird psychological thing that Kickstarter... Mm-hmm. I think video games have ruined on Kickstarter mm-hmm. because the tier that everyone always goes for is the one that gets you the product. Mm-hmm. And the assumption is then that, like, I pitched you 20 bucks to make this happen. The reward I get is the game. Why don't I have the game? I paid you for it. Like yeah. they, they see it as a transaction when it is a kickstart. It is you are giving them money to make something. The fact that you're getting it in return is a miracle. A bonus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, the game looks cool. I'm a little, I think we were talking about, we're sort of bummed out by the art style. I mean, let's talk about that with Altano. It's very, uh, I don't think so. It's, it's not pixely, it's not sprite based. It's very like hand drawn anime, almost like Dust mm. and Elysian Tale. Uh, and I don't, that's not uh, really what I want. I'm, I'm not going to pass judgment too early because we haven't sure. seen the game in motion. That's all concept, though. Uh, I mean, there was some like in game, like what they think. Yeah, yeah. Like. there is no game. Target render. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. They just have like a hand drawn thing, like this is no. what it'll look like when she's jumping and slashing. Also, watch their Kickstarter video because Igarashi <laughs> is in a castle. He uh, turns into a bat and he kills a man. Perhaps you've heard of my legacy. <laughs> See, yeah, and he drinks. He has a glass of wine that he throws at the wall. Evidently, filmed it at a castle in Napa Valley. <laughs> oh, I know where that castle is. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Castlevania. No, <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward. More to... More like Castle Vino. Yeah, oh! against the wall. That's not too bad. Uh, I'm, looking f- I'm looking forward to Hideo Kojima's Schmetel Schmier Schmollet Kickstarter in two years. Oh, man. Styrofoam. <laughs> Nut. Liquid. Li- yeah, liquid. Styrofoam Three. Nut liquid. liquid. <laughs> the, 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 tang- the, the tangible ouchie. The, the tangible boo boo. <laughs> the ghostly boo boo. That's a feature of the dumbest names of what game are we actually talking about? The ghostly boo boo. And is it dumber what, than the actual name? What yeah. games developers would make when they left companies? Yeah. That's a good Altano original. Smart. Don't steal it, Internet. <laughs> this is an I, Altano original, not yours. Now I want a bagel with some schmear on it. That's what you've done. <laughs> That's all you've done, Marty. Congratulations. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, this is coming to Xbox One, PS4, PC, Wii U. Probably not. <laughs> Wii U, you're good. We're gonna need to we're gonna need to kickstart another thirty dollars to bring this to Wii U because that's all we're. Gonna, it's <laughs> no, it's not gonna go there. I'm kidding. <laughs> Lego Dimensions, mm-hmm. bunch. Uh, there uh, seems like their whole reveal plan got spoiled by the in the most hilarious of ways. <laughs> Destin, uh, apparently, it was outed by a Lego instruction booklet. That's hilarious. Yeah, that's good. But the uh, man. I went from not really caring about this game to I'm going to buy... I don't, I don't even know if I'm going to buy the game. I'm just going to buy all of these. <laughs> all the toys. See, uh, I, I thought the same, but I saw the toys, and, and I'm like, of, they're just Legos. Mm-hmm. I can't just make, so, I can so just Mitch, make these. You have been, uh, you are, you've been expressed a great deal of enthusiasm about toys to life games, particularly as they pertain to Star Wars. So Just that one. Yeah, here's... Here's what's coming to right. Lego Dimensions. You know, we already had the initial announcement was Back to the Future... And I don't remember what the original. It was Back to the Future, Batman. That's uh, it. Some of Lord of the Rings. Yeah. So uh, the, what's been leaked is uh, Doctor Who, The Simpsons, Woo! Jurassic World, Ooh. Scooby-Doo, Woo! and here's the uh, here's the There's one for the gamers one. out there. Yeah. Portal 2. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. It's yeah. super cool. Super it's also cool. just like showing the breadth of the things they're going to go after. Like yeah. Hanna-Barbera cartoons <laughs> and modern blockbusters and Portal. Like that's like, I'm like, all right, there's no, there's now, you can't really make a joke about what's next because pretty much anything's possible. Yep. If it was Dota, Mitch would be excited. <laughs> yeah, if they got the other Valve game, I'd be on board. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know, I love Lego, but I just don't need, I don't know, like I don't need to collect Lego Simpsons and Lego Dinosaurs and Lego Shaggies and Lego Chells. <laughs> like, that stuff's just not as, in- that's just not as interesting to me as, like, a really stylized version of Spider-Man. Like, Steve, our editor-in-chief, has uh, Disney Infinity 2.0 figures on his desk. They're awesome. And I don't even care about that game, but I want them. They yeah. just look yeah. cool. Like, they are figures I that I would it. like to have. Yeah, and that's what excites me about Disney Infinity 3.0 is like I want a Hulkbuster and I want Ahsoka and I want all of these characters that I love from Star Wars. 3PO, we fixed that last week. Remember, oh, Star yeah. Wars Sorry, Disney, Disney Infinity, Infinity 3PO. 3PO. Oh, uh, that's exciting to me, and I do love Portal and I do love The Simpsons and I do love Scooby Doo. But the fact that all of the collectibles are like little Lego figurines is not super exciting to me. Scooby Doo. I just don't understand why. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good. Don't do that. <laughs> don't, just roll past it. I don't understand the difference between though what a Lego figurine versus a Disney Infinity figurine I mean, to, in, what, in your brain psychologically. Well, I mean, one it's, looks it's stylized. Like the, yeah. the stylized art representation of Han Solo and Luke Skywalker and Princess Leia in these like big, like they are large figurines. Yep. They are. They have a really cool style. They're detailed compared to uh, a little mishmash of blocks that kind of looks like. Uh, Peabody 
is I don't know, like that's just less interesting to me to have as a collectible. They're all like the like all the Disney Infinity characters. They're all like uh, the Genny Tarnovsky art style. Sort I, of, I compare yeah. it to that. It's inspired but it's by like, that for sure, yeah. I would say. Yeah. yeah. Almost like Team Fortress Two. I would say yeah, that's all. a good I mean, comparison. It also does a good job of unifying things that shouldn't look alike. Like how yeah. Smash Brothers almost does it to where yeah. like, you're like, well, these things shouldn't exist in the same world. Yep. It kind of makes Heroes sense. Heroes of the Storm did a really good job of that as yeah. well. Like here's all these Blizzard franchises that we're just mashing together and they all look unified in a mm-hmm. really cool way. Um, Lego can do that for sure. I think I, I have, this to, this is to say nothing of the game. Like right. Maybe the Portal stuff would be like how amazing would it be to be Homer Simpson with a Lego gun in the world of Scooby-Doo? Like that's awesome. <laughs> that's yeah. really fun. But as collectibles, this is... And I would have gotten away with it if it hadn't been for you. Mmm, don't ask. <laughs> I mean, those, games, those games have really good writing. Uh, yes. And so I'm yes. curious to see how deep the writing goes. It's it is like, Traveler's would, Tales making it. Do yeah. they like all talk to each other? Yeah, do like they if, have dialogue for everything? my Homer has a lightsaber and is going through you know, an aperture science test chamber, is there dialogue that's going to reflect all three of those? Can, God, can you imagine being the writer on that game? Fine. You would just go insane. <laughs> <laughs> This has been another episode of Toy Talk, which <laughs> our new podcast on IGN. Guaranteed. A lot of that going forward. Yeah. yeah. Next couple of years is going to be plenty of Toy Talk. Indeed. Uh, last story, Mitchell. Uh, the May system update for the Xbox One is yep. out. Uh, apparently, you can send voice messages, which I didn't know you couldn't do. Because yeah. you could do it on Xbox 360. <laughs> Uh, on original Xbox, in fact. Uh, wow! <laughs> on Halo 2, you could do that. <laughs> yeah. The all-in-one entertainment system. Uh, is that a typo, or is this a word I don't know? Deddies. I don't know that Deddies. word either. Deddies. You got to get in the community, son. Deddies. Deddies. Dedicated Deddies. servers. So what is oh. it? Okay, between ADS and Deddies, I don't want to be I've here. I've never heard of Deddies. <laughs> you guys got to get in touch with the kids. <sighs> Party chat has dedicated servers, which means finally your s- <laughs> Party server shouldn't crash every time you start party <laughs> chat. Finally, after a year and a half, two years. Uh, user selectable power modes and power on off via smart glass, which is actually really cool. Uh, if you don't have connect, now you can remote turn your console on and off. Uh, what do you feel? Yeah. Le- you feel less, less cynically than Mitch. I actually am. I'm, <laughs> I mean, yes, we can go on. We've done a million shows about what this console didn't have, but I'm really impressed by the last couple updates. In particular, I love, I mean, thank God voice messages are back because yep. I mm-hmm. hate typing out uh, it's the worst. texts either. At, it's I don't even want to, like, I know you can, it's quicker on smart glass. That requires me to get my iPad out, mm-hmm. which it's usually in the kitchen. That's usually where it, it lives. Uh, and I hate it on the controller. So yay, voice messaging, yep. which I had in Halo 2, like I just said. I love that. I mean, hey, improvements to party chat, that's good because that's been a, a work in progress since the console mm-hmm. launch. Sorry for then, those deadies. Yeah, <laughs> them, them deadies, son. And that then, is actually really good. Yeah. Like, I'm so glad that party chat will finally work. Hopefully. And then the, what was it last month? It was either March or last month, the, uh, that, the achievement updates they made, which I was yeah. so appreciative of. Oh my gosh, you know, we've yeah, complained finally. so long about how we hate how everything on the Xbox One is an app. It's like, it's my least favorite part of the system yeah. at its core because mm-hmm. everything takes too long. You have to launch an app, snap it, whatever. It just, uh, same thing with achievements. Like, my blades. Oh, I just got a 50 gamer score for something in Ori in the Blind Forest. Oh, let me see what this is. Jewel. Quit. Oh, wait, it quits oh, wait. the game yeah, and opens it, it dashboarded. Else. No, it, sorry, no. Hold it. Okay, now it's popping up in a snap window. <laughs> okay, there's the description that took me 1.5 seconds to read. Yeah. Close, go back to my game. Now, of course, it just, on the, it. on the toast, comes up with the points, description, and then it just rotates to... The description of it. Yeah. Thank you. So mm-hmm. these last, these, I think they're really hitting it out of the park these last couple months. And yeah. Glad to see it. Having used a lot more PSN lately, uh, just for Destiny, yeah. I, one thing I love, love about Xbox is the website. You can redeem codes yes. there. Yeah. Xbox you can you can find awesome. friends there. You can accept you can deny friend messages. requests. You can send. You can type out messages. That's true. It's you can such a nice avatar. feature. You can like set downloads for your home console to yep. start, so you get home and you can just play. I love all that stuff. Yeah, there's there's a lot to like, and I just yeah, I really appreciate the continued, the commitment. I mean, there have been I think they've missed one month. Maybe it was like December over the holidays when they actually gave their team some t- some time off but until their servers got <laughs> you well, know wrecked. The, that was a whole other issue, but yeah. uh, that affected everyone, not just mm-hmm. Xbox. But yeah, I just I really appreciate the commitment that these guys have that the Xbox team has had to to making it better, and I'm. Uh, there's still room to go, but they've come. They've come a long way from November twenty second, two thousand thirteen, to now. Mm-hmm. 
console is a million times better as it from a user experience perspective. Well, yeah, and it's going to be one of those things where early adopters saw it change, but the vast majority of people who own an Xbox One throughout the life of the console are going to just have this good form of it. Right. They're not going to know that, like, mm-hmm. oh, it was kind of clunky at the start. Yeah. So, yeah, cool. Kudos, Microsoft. Thanks for the continued work. We'll Ken go to Mitch kudos, Dyer. Raggy. <laughs> Go to Mitch Dyer for the Marketplace Report. Yeah, Project Cars finally came out. So if you're into racing games, this is one that's had uh, a lot of attention for the past couple years. Mm -hmm. It was also a Kickstarted game. Really? That yeah grew into yeah crowdfunded game. X Cody's right. Uh, yes, I believe a number of them are. So I don't know how the game itself actually is as a racing game, but man, it's pretty. Super pretty. Yeah. It's a Bandai Namco published joint. Hardcore sim racer. Mm-hmm. It is not a arcade goof around thing. It is you know Gran Turismo, Forza Motorsport level. Um, and our review of it was by Luke the Riley. great Luke Riley yeah, down in Australia, who reviews all of our racing games because he is super knowledgeable in the genre and loves it. Yeah, he gave it a good review. It's a nice. good, solid review. Nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, digitally, you've got Airmec Arena, which is a free-to-play, almost MOBA game. I saw this a couple years ago mm-hmm. at PAX. Really pretty, really cool. It's a Ubisoft thing, right? Yeah. yeah. Or, it, or published? It was it at was one Ubi- I, I played it at a Ubisoft booth once. Yeah, so it was an indie game that was in the Indie Mega booth one year. The next year was at Ubi's booth. Uh, and it came to, I think it was Xbox 360 via hmm. Ubisoft. So I would assume this is still a Ubi game. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a RTS, like you control a little ship. You fight some other ships. It's a multiplayer thing. It seems really cool. I've never actually had a chance to uh, play it on yeah. a console. It's free to play, so check it out. Totally. Uh, Slice Zombies, which is the only Connect game you'll ever see released on Xbox <laughs> again. Probably. For- yeah. We, weren't we just talking about that? Maybe even off the air. Right, like, like there what? are no more Connect games. Yeah. It's over. Yeah. Not so. Not Slice quite. Zombies. <laughs> um. Gosh. That's a box. Ultratron. Another. Indie game on Xbox One I've never heard of. How many people are going to get tricked thinking that's an Avengers game? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so Age sad. of Ultratron. Oh, Age of Ultratron. Uh, I'm opening Ultratron on the store right now just to see what it is. Uh, that's why they put it there. Experience that's the addictive the game. gameplay of old school arcade favorites. Updated for the 25th. <laughs> Ultratron is a twin six shooter arena inspired by the best classic games. That's what I said. The best that's classic <laughs> games. <laughs> An arcade game on steroids, Ultratron combines a risk-reward arena gameplay with an upgrade system, responsive difficulty, pet drones, special weapon abilities, online leaderboards, and co-op. On steroids, this just in, Ultratron has been banned for 25 (laughs) days. 25 (laughs) games by Major League Baseball. It looks super weird and crazy hectic. It could be cool. People are going to be playing it and be like, I don't understand how the Avengers tie into this world. (laughs) They'll come in eventually. It's the very Uh, odd price of $8.50. Yeah. And then really? games, the first uh, couple weeks of Games with Gold is wrapping up on Xbox 360. Be sure to grab Mafia 2. Just initiate the download. Yeah. Get it for free. You can cancel it. It'll be yours forever. Well worth playing. Uh, and then starting on May 16th, it's going to be F1 2013 for oh, Xbox yeah. 360 don't, 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 from don't, don't, the 16th to the 31st. <laughs> Wasn't that really bad? <laughs> Wasn't that one really bad? Well, Ryan, let me get you excited again because Pool Nation FX is still available for Woo! free on <laughs> Xbox One. Just uh, download it to make them stop. <laughs> I'm, I can taste the cigarette smoke in the air and the, <laughs> st- the taste of stale beer on my tongue. I like it. I like it. The I'm pool also, balls look very well rendered. As, They're as shiny. As bad as this month is, guys, I, I bought, can't say what it is, but I've heard it. Oh, you got, you got Pool Nation. I redeemed it on Smart Glass. <laughs> I actually downloaded it, but I will not open it. <laughs> I, I I'm like, should. it's free. Why not? Uh, but we've heard, I've heard some rumblings about what's uh, one of the games next month. Ooh, it's cool. We can't talk about we it. We can't talk about it. Oh, you tease. But, it's, cool. it's, but it's, it's cool. Very exciting. Yeah. So I'm just saying, if uh, you guys, if that yeah. actually goes through, it'll it'll make up for this. Definitely. This, oh, yeah. Sorry about Pool Nation to eat <laughs> a month in a row. <laughs> trash super, to be fair, Castle Storm Definitive Edition is actually really cool. I like that game. To be fair, I don't care. That's also <laughs> super fair. Uh, that's it. That's your games with gold. Good any, stuff. Any bets aside from that one about next month? I know we're a little early. You but, know, oh, we're still. <laughs> it's not. It's not betting time no? yet. I'm just so tired. Mitch is just of addicted to gambling. About <laughs> <laughs> Mitch has a significant <laughs> problem. Make it stop. I feel like I did it to him. Yeah. I just pressure this him is into your fault. it. I also, him into uh, it. slice zombies. Straight up, just stole the zombie design from Plants vs Zombies, <laughs> and it's Fruit Ninja. <laughs> This game is double plagiarism. Wow. Maybe, <laughs> maybe don't support that garbage. <laughs> <laughs> double plagiarism. Double plagiarism. Oh, uh, Lifeless Planet also came out this week. Oh, on yeah. On Xbox One. Uh, that's Sounds... a game I have not played, but uh, XIGN or Anthony Gallegos, I'm pretty sure, was really into it. Like, it's a 
very eerie. You're it's called Lifeless a, Planet? Yeah, you're just an astronaut on this. Isn't this Nero week? coming out this week, too? Nero is out next week or this week. I, okay. got, my, I got my code. Oh, nice. What's so, Nero? Nero is a weird. first person. Ex- it's sort of like Gone Homey. Everybody's gone to the Rapture, but okay. you're exploring this cool fantasy world. Like, and like, wait, wait, classic ad- by classic uh, third person adventure, do they mean like flashback and out of this world? No, because I could get down <laughs> with mean, that. I mean, it's oh, not yeah. that extreme, but it is very much like you are part of. You are in a a planet that is apparently desolate, and you're just an astronaut, and you were looking for stuff. That looks you're going like it's kind of aimless, but hmm. eventually you find stuff that. You know what you find? You a copy world. of Pool Nation FX. <laughs> <laughs> no. Plot Left yes. by previous generations. <laughs> uh, also, Schrodinger's Cat and the Raiders of the Lost. Ark. Bark. T- the title cuts off. Whatever. That game came out on Xbox One this week as well. Sentence. It's... Raiders of the Lost sentence. If you have to dig that deep, probably I don't, not worth it. It's not worth it. Yeah, I don't not know worth what this it. game is. Should All this must have here? posted today, because I prepped the show last night, and none of this was... Uh... It might be, because today is Wednesday. I'm checking the store no. here. Yeah, uh, I don't know if we mentioned this, by the way. Air Mac Arena is free. So yeah, definitely. Free yeah, we got that. FTP. Uh, it is also it's Ubisoft, for sure. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Groovy. Video, video games. We will be right back with a little trivia. Destin, chance to get back on, in the flow here. I think I'm going to do well. <laughs> All right, we'll be it's back right after this. Let me see. All right, unlock block, trivia time. Let me pull up the scoring. Brady Hammond is our winner this week. He's going to win himself a video game of some sort. Nice. Get it sent off to him. Pool some nation. sort of digital redemption. <laughs> yeah. Pool no more Pool, pool nation. nation. Turns out, <laughs> bad news, guys. It'll be our new Van Halen. <laughs> yeah. The scoring so far, Mitch, Destin, and Marty, all three of you, tied with seven. Sean, not on the show today. Six points. So you guys wow, have a chance you guys to gain some up. ground. That's what happens when yeah, you don't man. call in I'm just going to call in sick for the uh, live streams from now on and just hide in this room. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Surprise him here. So Brady Hammond wrote in. Uh, we were talking a little Lego, Lego Dimensions yeah. earlier in the show. And Brady asks, what was the first Lego game to introduce voiced dialogue? Your choices are A, Lego Batman 2, DC Super Heroes, B, Lego The Hobbit, C, Lego The Avengers, the Marvel game, or D, Lego The Movie the game. I'm going to ask everybody to write down their answers. There's a oh, pen. okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? This is like the Dark Knight where you break the pool cue in half. <laughs> We're going to have wow, you, tryouts. Got it. I did it. I you, got it right, You got guys. like official with uh, how you guessed. Yep. Yeah, we, we, uh, we're tightening up security around yeah, here. Tighten up the graphics. All right. No more riding my coattails to success, Destin. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm in trouble then. All right. <laughs> everybody has written down their answers. Again, the question, which of the LEGO video games was the first to have voice dialogue? I will go to Destin first because we haven't seen him in a while. All right, B, LEGO The Hobbit. You are incorrect. Marty? Oh, oh mine's correct, so I want to know if All right, Mitch is Okay. Marty, am I correct when I say... I was actually trying to figure out... I'm pretty sure that most of these have vo- uh, voice, but... I All wanna, of them have voice. Okay, I thought so. I was trying to remember the chronology, but I said a LEGO Batman 2. Congratulations, Mitch. Woo! That you is and correct. I are correct. Yes. It is? Yep. Oh, on, gentlemen. Yeah, I, I, I Destin so. had led all year, now falls into second place. Lego Batman 2 came out like a year or two ago. Oh, nope. it, was like comic it came out before three, all those games. Yeah. Dude, it Gre- did? Greg reviewed that game. That was when Greg was still reviewing games. Yeah, Lego because Lego Batman 3 came out. Uh, Maybe yes, that's so. where I mixed it up. Darn it. Yep. Maybe right. All right. Good stuff. Good trivia. No. Let's get Question. the heck out of here. Let's yeah, do man. It. We'll plug a few things first. IGN Prime, of course is, uh, I think, a valuable thing to add on if you're a, a regular IGN user. 30 bucks a year will get you no ads before videos, as well as uh, fewer ads on IGN.com itself. Uh, free games via either monthly, monthly mobile or PC giveaways, and then the occasional game beta as well. Go to IGN.com slash Prime for that. Marty. Yeah. What are you up to? You can follow me on Twitter at McBiggity. Uh, we just put up uh, part two of the history of awesome. It's 1978. We talked about this, I think, the other week. Uh, we're doing 40 videos and, and written components, <laughs> one a week until all of us are d- dead in sand. <laughs> uh, sort of starting in 1977, which was the Star Wars slash Atari year, and just going forward year by year about uh, all the cool video games and movies and TV shows and comics and pop culture things. That happened that year. I was on the 78 one. We talked about Superman and Halloween and other neat things. Check that, that was out. the best year? Yeah. Also, we're not going to be here next week, Ryan. That's true. Yeah, I was oh, going to yeah. get to that. But right. 
Uh, so oh, man, it's yeah, a big I, show. It's a big yeah, show. Yeah, no, we were talking about this because Ryan was... I did bring it up. Yeah, so we were talking... Should we do the E3 prediction, the reader's predictions while you guys are out? That actually sounds like a smart, smart yeah, way, way to go. ruin everything. No. Reader predictions, I could yeah. buy us an episode. It'll be unlocked. <laughs> no uh, number. It'll just be the unlocked no, prediction no, show. No, no, put a number on it. It's right. fine. It's It'll be 196. So send your emails, unlocked.igen.com. Send me your E3 Microsoft predictions. Mm -hmm. Uh, me and a panel of people who are not these gentlemen. You want, you want to come? Can you hang out or are you going to abandon me? I can hang out. Woo! Uh, yeah. Finnegan, I'm sure, can yeah, be here we'll as get, well. We'll you might be able to find a special guest. Yeah, maybe grab Naomi or yeah. somebody. Or uh, maybe grab Vince and talk a little Witcher since he'll actually be idea. out. Yeah. No. It'll be Wednesday, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah I'm Wednesday. fine. Okay, so we'll figure something out. We'll uh, read a lot of your email predictions, so send those. Unlocked.igen.com. Mm -hmm. Let us know what you think Microsoft's yeah. going to do. Marty with and I will be at the E3 Judges Week, which is this weird dog and pony show that they do every year in L.A. There's you make dog? it sound bad. Well, it's actually no, it's kind not. of amazing. It's <laughs> Usually. It's kind of amazing. <sighs> I've never been, but you get to play it's, a bunch of games. We do. No, yeah. there's We get to see a lot of cool stuff. It's just... Kind of long. It's, uh, yeah, so, yeah, no, there's it's a lot. Twelve hour days. I'm out. We're out the entire week, which you know, there's a lot going on, and it's difficult to be out of the office for an entire week. But yep. the good news is, yeah, we get to sort of get a little sneak peek of E3 and Fidgies. yeah, help uh, cast ballots for you know those dim award shows, newfangled E3 awards that everybody mm -hmm. seems to like. Cool. That's it. Mitch? Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Did you have anything uh, else? <laughs> I'm at MATD on Twitter. Be sure to check out IGN first. We're doing a bunch of rock band coverage all week, yes. including the gameplay reveal on Friday at noon Pacific. Uh, we have features going up all throughout the month. There's some really good stuff coming, so if you're excited about Rock Band 4, don't miss that. I sure as hell am. Me too. Super excited to finally sit down and write my feature about the campaign, which sounds yes. awesome. Uh, that Arguably, Mitch, would you agree that the, that the campaign is the most exciting new feature in the game? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I told Marty about it. And, uh, For us. Just kind of some comparisons I made to Marty. He's like, yep, okay, I'll play that. <laughs> yep, sounds very cool. Right up my alley. Yep. Um, gosh, what else am I doing? Uh, Friday, I have a feature going up. Uh, we A bunch of us in the office are reading the new Star Wars novel, Lords of the Sith. And are you doing a book club? IGN we, book club? We probably should be. I mean, the, Is it okay? read it together. the reception, so like, we did a review did really well. Okay. People were That's really good. interested in reading it. It was a really big experiment. We're like, are people going to read about a Star Wars book? <laughs> yeah, people read that review a lot. So we've been Luke, doing uh, I am a, your librarian. a bunch of like really detailed wiki pages. We're doing a bunch of features. I have a feature going up Friday about the five coolest moments, one of which involves Darth Vader ejecting himself into space and attacking a starship. Whoa. The five longest words in this book. <laughs> Top five longest <laughs> words. <laughs> I was expecting five examples, but all right. I couldn't think of a long word. Death was the longest one I could think of. That's like five letters long. Vader is longer than death. No, I think it's the same. Yeah, I'll be... <laughs> I'll be hosting the Rock Band 4 live stream with Damon, and uh, Mitch will be on there as well. I think, Mitch, we decided you're playing the game. Probably. Because it's, yeah, Damon and I ho as uh, sitting okay. on the couch. And then me and a rotating group of yes. nerds playing some Rock Band. Yeah, and in fact, I had some volunteers, so I'll have, to, nice. I'll, have to, I'll, have to, I'll have to have a band meeting. Cool. Maybe like today or tomorrow. All right. Yeah, so I'm stoked about that. And then uh, I actually have an editorial going up tomorrow, which will probably be now by the time most of you hear the show. It is about... Xbox Live Arcade and why I how and why I think Microsoft should have never gotten rid of it and why it's a huge problem that they did and how to fix it. So that's good because cool. when this generation was coming, I was all for abolishing it, like stop segregating indie games to this arcade thing. Like let's games are games are games. Put which is what Microsoft said. Put an uh, indie game right next to Call of Duty, and then they just never promoted any of them. So yeah. yeah. So check out my editorial mm -hmm. on that posting on Thursday on IGN. And follow me on Twitter at DMC underscore Ryan. Uh, I'm looking forward. The one thing I am looking forward to about being in L.A. Next, in Santa Monica next week, we're uh, we got to go to the Santa Monica Pier, which is what Jose and I did last year, and see if they still have the Batman arcade game oh, yeah. that oh, we were nice. talking oh, about wow. just last week. I played, the, uh, I played it this weekend. It's at uh, in Oakland uh, at Jack London Square. They have this massive arcade bowling alley. Nice. Here. It's is it a beat em up? Hall. Go no, it. it's a driving. It's like a car comp. Like, oh, a massive game. I know what you're talking go about. Finish it. Yeah. We should do reviews of dumb arcade games. Yeah. Like, we, uh, like, Battle we could like, go review. Like, if yeah. Pockin is out when we Battle go to Tokyo cool. this year, we should review Pockin. Yeah. What, like the Battle Pod game we should do a review for. I totally think we should review dumb arcade games. It'd be so exciting. I want to review those crappy games at bars where, like, it's a match three, and then you see some boobs at the end. <laughs> in the Seven out of ten. In the disclaimer <laughs> section, it's like, I spent $10 and quarters on this arcade machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Destin, take us home. What are you plugging? Are you uh, on? At Destin Legary. I really want to read the, the rock band stuff that's coming out this Friday, actually. I'm really interested in the songs 
and uh, I want to check out the live stream now. I am working on uh, a bunch of Destiny stuff. Next week, Tuesday, is the big drop of content for House of Wolves. I'll be streaming that, like, all day um, just because I want to hit 34 before everybody else. Doing a bunch of best ways to play for The Witcher and uh, for Destiny for that launch day. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Good stuff. Most of you get the show on iTunes. Just find us easily enough. Search Podcast Unlocked. Also, IGN.com or YouTube or, better yet, the Xbox One app. Just watch the show on your big screen. That's unless you don't want to see our faces in 1080p, which is totally understandable. <laughs> well, 1080i. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Just well, taking us back to 2004. We're all so much more handsome. It's true. Mm -hmm. A little interlacing never hurt this face. <laughs> I'll oh, tell you that much. For Marty Sleva, Destin Legary, and Mitch Dyer, my name's Ryan McCaffrey. Again, save the date, June 27th, 2015, in San Francisco, California. That's a Saturday. Going to be a mostly all-day podcast unlocked slash podcast beyond fun community event. We hope you'll be able to join us. Nice. And uh, we'll see you guys. Well, actually, I will see you in two weeks. Marty oh, yeah. will see you in two weeks. Mm -hmm. You will see Mitch, I have the power. and Finnegan. Uh, and maybe Vince back with nice. your E3 prediction show next week. Cool. Marty told me. Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs>